There's this little plaque. It's uh, in Chinese, so I have no idea what it says, but I'm sure it's about the gun. So, this is the M134, I do believe. Yes, M134 Gatling gun. Um, this is based on the real gun the military uses, but as you can tell by this little joystick handle on it, this is in the configuration that, like, you see it in the Terminator movies where it's being carried by a person, which is completely impractical. Like, this thing, when fired, produces several hundred pounds of force, of recoil. And one of the things they never show in the movie is that this little motor requires a lot of electricity to run. And since it fires a couple hundred rounds in a matter of seconds... You would be carrying 100 pounds of ammo just to fire for literally five seconds. So, these are scaled, I do believe. I'm not 100% sure because the instructions are mostly in Chinese. I do believe they're scaled for like one-sixth scale action figures like the classic large G.I. Joes. Let me tilt down here a little bit. But, I mean, as far as being just general models, if you're a gun collector, these are really neat little kits. It does snap together. It doesn't need to be glued. But I'm going to say that you probably should glue it, especially if you're getting these for kids. If you're going to assemble these kits for kids, glue it together because there's a lot of small parts in here that do move like the clearance door is removable and a lot of the parts are just kind of press fit together the barrels do spin via this little knob underneath if you play around with it a little bit it, it does actually get run pretty true the kit comes like this not a whole lot to it these kits are only like I think I paid like $3.20 for each of these with free shipping from China. Push that off the side. So, here's the instructions. Pretty straightforward. They're actually pretty clear. I'm trying to show you to do sub assemblies first and then stick them together. The only thing that's not really super clear is how to get this to lock into the hub. This is the, the D-linker. This is the thing that actually removes the uh, links that hold the belt together before going into the gun so the links don't jam up the gun. I'll explain that when I get to it. Alright, so... Separating the parts out into groups, we have all the barrels. These little pieces of plastic that you're going to find in here like this, they are not actually part of the kit. They are little bits of sprue that held these barrels together when they were cast. So you can ignore them. Here's a couple more of them. Alright, so barrels. These are components of the barrel assembly. This is the uh, little plaque. Let's put that aside. It doesn't really have anything to do with the build. There's another component of the barrel. First thing is handle onto the carriers. Before I get too far into this, another thing that seems to be a little unusual about the uh, the movie gun, which this is based on, is that from watching videos of these guns, it seems like this is actually on its side from how it's mounted in most planes. It seems to be mounted like this, generally with the motor up into the side and the D-linker coming in from the 
bottom left. But I think for the D-linker to not hit the actors, they had to kind of rotate the whole assembly like this. So when you're looking at pictures of these mounted, they do look a little different. But like I said, if you change the angle around a little bit, it starts to make a little more sense. They had to make a lot of allowances to make it something that would actually be usable by a person because normally these are physically mounted on a gun post or a uh, hydraulic damping mount. That's actually what these are, is they're little hydraulic dampers to take the recoil out. And when they used these in the movies, they actually fired blanks. The real guns, like I said, way, way too much force. Nobody would be able to handle it. All right, so pushing all these aside for the moment, we'll start with the barrel. Now, there are little bits of sprue right here from when these were cast. You can shave this off, but you actually don't have to. It's going to be hidden. Uh, if you paint this kit with metallic paints, like I've seen in some pictures, it looks really, really good. So for those of you out there that are hardcore modelers, you can make this into a really, really nice looking kit. Alright, so right through here is showing the assembly. So these first two pieces form the base. That's this component. And this. And they are keyed together with a flat spot. Put it in and rotate it a little bit until it drops in. And just give it a good push. This, these two parts and how they're fitting together is going to determine whether or not this barrel spins cleanly or whether it wobbles so use some force in pushing this together don't break it but make sure this is straight if you're gluing this together you may want to wait on gluing this last piece until you have it set up to where you can drop the barrel in and check it check that it's running true I actually intend to the reason why I'm not gluing or painting these is both of these are actually going to get modified for a project. And I do believe I'm actually going to drive the barrels with this little tiny N20 gearbox assembly. Uh, this one's geared too low because that's for another project, but you can buy these with quite a few different gear ratios. I'll try to find a fast one. Okay, this is the most, most important piece for holding this all together. This is the one you want to start dropping all the barrels through. So those two little sprues that I mentioned before, if you kind of adjust them to where they flatten out against the sides of that, the inside of this, they'll keep it from rotating while you're assembling it. Don't worry about how well aligned they are yet. As you slide on each one of these rings, it lines up and tightens up. Next component in line is the thin disc with the tube. Stacked together with this disc and this one facing this way. And this has another flat spotted keyway. So, why well, it's hard to do this with the camera in front of me. So slide that onto that second stage, line it up with the flat spot, and then this one goes on top of it. Rotate it around to where it finds its flat spot and drops on. Really, it does, I swear. Wow. Uh, 
Okay. Once you get it all lined up, give it a firm push. Now this is Sam. Work all the barrels through this whole assembly. Actually, I made a mistake. Redo. So this one's also keyed and I didn't have them lined up. So these four pieces need to be assembled together first. Okay. Once you have that assembled, now drop them through. Now each barrel as you push it through is going to basically land half in, half out of this last uh, disc. This is normal, this is actually correct. It's not supposed to seat up against that edge. Put one on the opposite side to get it stable. That one is bent just a little bit, so we'll gently persuade it back mostly in the line. If you get components and kits like this that are kind of dramatically bent and don't really want to straighten out, you can heat them up a little bit. And one safe way to do that is to heat them up with really hot water, like almost boiling. You can also use like a hair dryer or a heat gun. Or if you're uh, a little more adventurous, like I tend to be, use a lighter or torch work quick okay there's a little bit of flash around the end of each barrel you can clean up with a razor blade Again, I'm not going to do that in this build because these guns will actually have to be taken back apart and modified for what I'm doing with them. As usual, I'm not doing what you're supposed to do with anything that I ever buy or build. The assembly we built before. Work all the barrels into it. Give it a firm, firm push. Wiggle it back and forth, work it a little bit, give it a little twist. There's a lot of resistance pushing all those barrels in at once. Okay. And that's the basis of the barrel and bolt assembly. Before I move on, one thing that's not clearly marked on these instructions is there are these two small discs with knurled edges, right? One has a small hole, one has a larger hole. They do show you where to put the one with a small hole, but they don't show you where to put this one. And it needs to go right over here like that. If it's not in here, uh, the barrel assembly will slide too far into the body and it'll rattle back and forth and move around a lot. So, Two main sub-assemblies out of the way. We'll move on to building the body. Set that aside. That actually goes on very last. Okay, going back to the instructions. These two pieces are the main components of the body. They can be snapped together right off the bat be these two. Autofocus work with me, come on. So there are two very small pins on each side here and they actually go into these bosses here and here. 
looking at this one, there's a little bit of damage right there. It's not really going to affect it that much, but it's kind of disappointing. Sorry, I, correction, there's three pins here. Notice that there's two tabs here, a narrow tab and a wide tab. If you look on the inside here, Here's the gap for the wide tab, here's the gap for the narrow tab. Just line them up and get all those three little pins dropped in. Push it together with some force. That's the main part of the body. Next are these. There's two of these little brackets and two of these. They are keyed like the barrel parts are with a flat spot but don't just stick them together and assume. Put these parts on first. For reference this right here is what we're building. So if I flip the body that same direction you'll notice these small gaps. These are actually dovetailed So face the hole towards the front. Get it at the back of that dovetail. And gently apply a crap ton of force to shove that little part in there. Just like so. Now, flip over to the other side, same deal. Again, make sure the hole is pointing forward at the back of that dovetail and push. Now, the reason why you didn't want to put these in first is that these can end up upside down if you swap sides. So, you need to find the side where the flat spot lines up and the this little channel points up like so so these are the top of the gun and on this one it locks into which side oh no I actually got these swapped so If that happens, slide it back out. It's a little bit of gentle persuasion. Ow. And switch them. Knocked the back off the body when I did that. Okay, let's try this again. So... There we go. Notch facing upwards. That one. Again, this is why I say glue. And that one. Some parts on these take a lot of force to push together, and some parts like this main body seam don't take hardly any pressure at all come apart fairly easily but these kits are a couple bucks whatever next part motor body does not matter which direction you put this in the end of the motor is keyed so if you want once you push this together rotate the body around until the uh, seams are the least visible That goes into this component. Now if you look here, you have these two tabs standing off. And they have tiny, tiny little dovetails that go into the grooves 
on this motor bracket. Get it at the back side and push it forward. This one can actually be pushed too far. You just want to bring it up to where it's level with the front of those tabs. There we go. Motor in place. Now this is the D-linker. This is the component that helps pull the belt in and removes the links that connect the belt of bullets. So its motor needs to go on. It's also key. Just rotate it till it lines up. This is the one component I have had a lot of problems with on the other gun. It's see these two tabs standing off here and these two little tabs on this but the grooves in the middle of these tabs are how you need to line it up so it goes like so Let's see if I get close to the camera it's kind of unusual and you're not going to push it in all the way um, if it's rotated too far one way or the other it just it won't lock in there but if you look back here we have these two tabs standing off that are notched or kind of C-channel shaped. So you get it slid in forward like that and then rock it down and try to get those little tabs to line up. This component honestly is not that well attached. But there is the main uh, firing assembly motor delinker all together. There's the little clearance door. It snaps on right here. Little hinge. Again, glue, 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 glue. Okay, now the strap hangs in those two grooves on the shock absorbers, and then your carrying brace assembly pushes over the top of that. So you have those C-shaped assemblies going over the top of it. So, press them together, and this is just hanging out in the space. This is okay. This is normal. We're going to take the barrel assembly, slide it through, see as the pin comes out the back, we're going to line it up to the hole in the grip assembly. And then this little tiny disc that I mentioned before goes right on the pin like so. And there we go. One assembled M134 Gatling gun. This company actually makes several designs. As cheap as these are, I'm actually tempted to buy one of each of these and get some metallic paints and paint them up accurately and just kind of hang them on like a mini weapons rack. Kind of like to find that mini gun case too. Anywho, that's all for the assembly. Now what I actually intend to do with these is uh, there are several different Gatling guns used throughout the military. This is actually the smallest of them, but like I said before, this is one six scale and it's meant to go with like your large scale G.I. Joes and action figures, but I'm working with these size characters. These are uh, 1 18th, your standard small G.I. Joe style characters. 
what I'm hoping is in the scale jump from one sixth to one eighteenth that this is somewhat on par with the uh, GAU eight Gatling guns that are actually in the A ten Warthogs. Uh, if you're not familiar with those, they're a fixed wing jet aircraft that basically is a flying auto cannon. They literally built the plane around the gun. And uh, it's a similar design, has a smaller motor, could not be carried at all. It's, I want to say, eight feet long for just the gun assembly and like another six feet for the uh, the rotary magazine that feeds it. This is not quite accurate to it because that's a seven barrel gun, but I'm working on a fantasy project that'll be kind of a mix between Mad Max, Evil Dead, Tank Girl. So the plan is to turn these into a uh, like an anti-aircraft gimbal assembly with a seat in between and a huge feed mechanism to power feed the ammunition in. Here, for scale, here's the cab of the truck that, when I go the whole rat rod treatment, cut the cut the roof down, section the body. It'll have ridiculous tires. I'm gonna go with like a a demon skeleton as the person sitting in this gun. But for size, what I'm going for is this flatbed gun truck with this ridiculous over-the-top monstrosity of a weapon in the back of it. Should be fun.